Hi, oh. Megan. We want to. We oh. have received a noise complaint at your unit. There it is. There it is. The last I, of the eyebrow. Last, you I got extreme. No. Have you ever thought about what your life could look like without alcohol? I did more than just think about it. Nine months ago today, I took a leap and decided to quit drinking. But this wasn't just a spur of the moment decision. Ever notice why we're always making excuses for why we drink? Like, why do we feel we got to explain it? Nine months ago today, I had my last drink and it got me thinking, what if we just stopped with the excuses and started making choices that really feel right for us? Imagine choosing what's actually good for you over what you think you need to unwind. July 9th was my last day of drinking, sitting around the pool, went to Top Golf, had mimosas, came home, drank all the liquor that I had in my house because I knew it was gonna be the last day for 75 days. 75 hard is a mental challenge with physical benefits that lasts 75 days. It involves following a strict diet, working out twice a day, reading, taking progress pictures, and a key component for me, no alcohol. It forced me to confront not just my physical limits, but also my habits, my excuses, and the reasons behind my drinking. Why is it that when I was drinking alcohol, which I don't drink alcohol anymore, why is it that I was unable to stay in physical shape? I was always depressed. I always had anxiety. I wasn't able to function at work properly. I was hazy all the time. But that's celebrated as a normal part of American culture, almost like a rite of passage. It was about way more than getting in shape. It was about getting my mind right and facing life head on without using alcohol as a crutch. Why do we often feel the need to justify our drinking? Just winding from a tough day, it's just what we do, right? But here's the thing, during those 75 days and in the months that followed, I stopped making those excuses. I started to ask myself, what if I just lived without those justifications, without reaching for a drink to deal with life stressors, to celebrate, or to socialize? What I discovered was a level of clarity and accomplishment I hadn't known was even possible. My relationships, my health, even my bank account saw positive changes, but the biggest change was in how I dealt with life itself. Sober, clear-headed, and on my own freaking terms. Little did I know that not even halfway through, I would choose to pour all the alcohol left in my house down the drain. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. A weight lifted off my shoulder and I was like, I don't need this anymore. When I got through those first three weeks, it was brutal. I was a complete B, I agree. No, I did not have withdrawals. It was such a bad habit for me that I just mentally thought I needed it. My body wasn't physically dependent on it. I used it for social anxiety. I used it for a bad day. I used it because the kids were screaming too much. The dogs were barking, you know, jobs were stressful. Life just got chaotic. And I thought that I needed to use alcohol to unwind me. Why do we always feel like we need to justify having a drink? Rough day at work, just one to unwind. It's just what we do when we hang out, right? Nine months back, I stopped making those excuses and started asking myself, what if I just stopped? Not just stopped drinking, but stopped all the justifications that those excuses and started making choices that really felt good for me. First, it was about not reaching for that bottle, but the real challenge, it was facing up to why I was reaching for it in the first place. We spend as much of our lives trying to numb things out, blur the edges, but what if we lived on our own terms. I thought I needed alcohol for camping. I thought I needed it for everything 
in life. I was the drinker, and yes, I know I'm my own environment, and many people have told me this. When you grow up in a small town, everybody's just drinking. That's what we do for fun. We grew up with parents drinking. We grew up with everybody drinking, Old, hung out with older people. They were drinking. You know, your life was just revolved around alcohol. I knew no different. Yes, there's always the story that you know, there was two boys. One didn't drink because he watched his dad. The other drank because he watched his dad. Well, in my situation, I grew up with smokers and I hated smoking, so I chose never to smoke. However, yes, I grew up with drinking and I chose to drink. And now these past nine months have really opened my eyes to realize like just how much peer pressure and society makes alcohol such a big part of our lives. I love wine, always forever, rosé, spine, prosecco, is better every night. I will be with you drinking away all of my issues. Say you'll fix me up temporary, pour it to the top, don't be stingy. And when I wake up, I will be hungover. I could have chose not to drink, could have told people, no, I'm not drinking. What we do to fit in, sitting around the fire or standing around somebody's kitchen or watching games or TV together, and now we're the ones not drinking. Yes, it's kind of awkward because people are sitting around justifying why they, you know, why they don't want to stop or using the excuse like, I just need to get through this or gosh, I just had such a bad day. And it's just all about justifying why we drink. If I was to go up to somebody and be like, oh, I quit using heroin, people would be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. Good for you. And it wouldn't be like, oh, why are you not using heroin anymore? Just like when we quit drinking, well, why aren't you drinking? Oh, that's good for you. I just can't do that. Okay, well, if you, you know, roles reversed and heroin was a thing, they would be like, oh yeah, I really need to quit that. I'm actually working on that. I mean, it's just, diff it's crazy how different drugs are. Like alcohol is a drug as well but it is an acceptable drug. 20% of you are subscribed. How many more people we can help if that 80% hit that subscribe button? When you quit it, people question you, people make it awkward. And then they're always justifying like, you know, oh, we're not drinking, we quit drinking. Oh, I should probably quit drinking. Oh, just give me one more month. Oh, I quit for three weeks. Okay, that's cool. Why did you, what made you fail? Because you thought that you needed it? You turned to the bottle? You didn't get it out of your house. You didn't ask for help. You just sat and, you know, played the victim card again. I mean, you have to get past those first three weeks or, you know, three months, a year. I mean, you have to give it your all and quit justifying why you need a drink. That is the question. In our minds, we think that we need a drink. Our friends tell us we need a drink. The TV tells us we need a drink. Movies tell us we need a drink. The billboards tell us we need a drink. Going to a restaurant tells us we need to drink. It's just all about drinking. 10% of it is letting go of that bottle, and the 90% is working on it. I did not know that. So nine months ago, when I realized that I had a problem with drinking, I mean, I could go weekends and, like, blacking out and just, I was just always looking forward to the next drink. I could go weeks without drinking and, or days without drinking. And it wasn't like my body depended on it. Like I mentioned before, I didn't have withdrawals like people have asked, but I had to learn a whole different way of life. I had to learn to cope without alcohol. I used different tools to help me not reach for the bottle. There's therapy, there's working out outside, making sure I was working out, finding healthy supplements that help ease that anxiousness instead of taking, you know, prescription drugs or, you know, something. I found ways around wanting to, you know, reach for the bottle. And then now it's like, life is stressful and usually I'm turning to the bottle and oh my gosh, I could use a glass of wine. Now it's just pouring a seltzer water or something with magnesium in it to like help calm me, taking out the anine, getting outside, sitting outside, getting fresh air, going for a walk, getting more involved with my children. A lot of people are missing out on their children's lives as they are young because they feel the need that they have to drink. And that's just because honestly we want to fit in. And I think once you realize that who cares if you don't fit in, then you're going to have so much success without 
alcohol in your life. These past nine months have been eye-opening. My relationships, my health, my bank account, everything's changed. And it's not just in the I'm saving money on drinks way. I mean, real deep, meaningful change. It turns out a lot of the stuff I was drinking to deal with, it gets a whole lot easier to handle when you're dealing with it head on sober. I've had people say to me, that's great. I wish I could do that, but I could never give up drink drinking. And to that I say, why not? What's really stopping you? Because the truth is quitting drinking isn't just about giving something up, it's about getting so much more in return. I've discovered joy in things I didn't expect, like actually remembering the night before, waking up without a hangover and genuinely enjoying moments without thinking about the next drink. And let's talk about dealing with life, stress, work, relationships, all of it. I've got this new toolkit that doesn't include alcohol and it's working out pretty darn well. Here we are, nine months later, I've been to hockey games, concerts, and dinners and enjoyed them all without a drop to drink. Waking up the next day, feeling good, not wasting the day, feeling rough or regretting how much I spent the night before. And the best part, the weekends are now all about quality time with my kids, doing fun stuff together instead of just planning the next drinking session. I haven't regretted any of it, not once. How many times have I regretted drinking? I can't even, like, it's too many times. It's actually embarrassing how many times. Like, I'm pretty sure every single time that I drink, I would regret something. How much I spent, or what did I say? What did I do? What did I act like? Oh, I didn't spend enough time with my kids. I think the once you realize that you don't regret not drinking and you regret drinking. I mean, some of you are gonna like be like, oh, well, what do I regret? You know, I only, I'm a social drinker, so I don't regret drinking. Okay, well, then this isn't for you. For those of us that have had a problem with alcohol, one isn't enough, and you know what I mean when I say we regret drinking because we just wake up the next morning feeling like complete crap. Let me tell you, I can come home and instead of spending 500 bucks a night, now it's like maybe 50 bucks. So a huge savings on going to these concerts. Usually I'm completely drunk and I'm, I've been the DD now. Like I drive to the concerts, I drive to these events. Before that, I had to like think about how many drinks, how many drinks was I having beforehand and how many drinks am I gonna have there with no like, no idea what the repercussions were gonna be and how ridiculous it was gonna be. One goes to 20 and here we are the next day, can't get out of bed. That is the thing that I regret. I, however, do not regret not drinking. So why am I sharing all of this? If you've ever wondered, even for a second, what your life might look like without alcohol, maybe it's time to find out. It's not just about putting down the bottle. It's about picking up a whole new way of living. Trust me, it's completely worth it. Life in all its fullness and complexity doesn't need to be doled or escaped from. It can be lived, truly lived, without needing a drink to make it feel more bearable or enjoyable. Here's the kicker. I realized that a lot of the excuses I made for drinking weren't just about the alcohol. They were about not wanting to face certain truths about myself and about my life. But once I started facing those truths and everything began to change, I started to understand myself better, to grow, and to find healthier ways to cope with the ups and downs of life. It hasn't been all easy. There were moments when I questioned my decision, moments when I felt out of place, which happens quite a bit, like when I was the only one not drinking at a party or a gathering, but those moments taught me something important. They showed me who I am when I'm not hiding behind the glass. They showed me strength I didn't know that I even had. So if you're watching this and thinking, maybe I could try that. Maybe I could see what life is like without alcohol. I want to say this, it's absolutely worth a shot. You might just discover parts of yourself you never knew existed. You'll definitely face challenges, but you'll also find new joys, new strengths, and new freedoms. Remember, it's not about giving up something, it's about gaining so much more. More clarity, more health, more happiness, and so much more time to do things with the people that you love and just life in general. So here's my challenge to you. Think about what your life could be like nine months from now without alcohol, picture it. If you're curious, even just a little, why not give it a try? You've got nothing to lose and a whole new world to gain. And to those of you who decide to take on this journey, know that you're not alone. There's a whole community out here, myself included, ready to support you, cheer you on, 
and share all the ups and downs. Just pour yourself into these things because without this community, I'm pretty sure I would have failed. There's so many days that I don't necessarily say that I need to drink anymore, but there are moments where, yeah, I could be weak. Then I realized like this group keeps me accountable. Everybody looking up to me now keeps me accountable. All the people that I've inspired, even like some of my family and friends, it's been a journey and going from the drinker, the one that, you know, was the life of the party, the one having the events because I was the drinker. So I would always, you know, host the parties and stuff. Our life is completely different now. We hardly host things. If we do, we go somewhere or they're little things. They're not just huge, massive parties anymore. And yeah, being around alcohol, it's not necessarily there's no temptation there anymore. It's more about feeling like maybe left out, not left out, but like people look at you differently. I think that's the most awkward thing because people sit here and justify. I could never let go of alcohol because it's my escape. And to me, that is the lamest excuse ever. Have you thought what your life could be like without alcohol? Have you thought of maybe working out, eating right, getting your mind right, talking to a therapist, talking to friends, and realizing that your life could actually be a lot healthier and better. Who am I kidding? The alcohol was always the negative factor. It was never the situation. It was always the alcohol. I chose to drink and I chose how much I drank and when I drank, but going forward, now I, I'm learning from my past mistakes and experiences and now I have my kids looking up to me and it's so nice when they say, oh, mommy and daddy don't drink anymore. They just, they notice these things. So imagine all the things that they notice now sober, what they actually are noticing when you're drunk ass on the floor or being ridiculous in front of them. My kids will not understand until they're older, but you know, just making up for those lost times now is so important to us. Having my daughter look up to somebody that is a role model for her because that is what little girls need and little boys also need a strong man to look up to as well. If you're just going to sit and drink your life away and show them that that's the only way to escape life, it's completely wrong. There are so many other ways to figure out life and deal with it instead of just turning to the bottle and ruining your life even more. 10% of sobriety is about putting down the bottle. The other 90% is working on yourself what makes you feel the need to grab that bottle? There's never a need. It's just what you mentally think that you need because you're not working on any other aspect of your life. And I'm sorry, but if you want to quit drinking, you have to get it out of your freaking house and not put yourself in situations that are going to tempt you until you know that you are solid on being able to be around people that are drinking also. Why put yourself through complete misery of withdrawals and changing for three weeks just to turn yourself around and go right back down. Another huge thing about quitting drinking is you don't just say, I'm gonna quit drinking this alcohol and turn to the other one because if you're a true functioning alcoholic or alcoholic in general, you're going to go right back down the path that you came from. You put yourself through misery and you're just gonna turn to a different alcohol just to take you right back down that rabbit hole and it's it's just gonna be a cycle over and over how do you break that cycle you just do it you get it out of your house you get the help that you need put your pride aside and get the help that you need please comment where you are in your journey and how we can help nine months sober and i am feeling so mentally stronger and physically better that i like it just i can't even explain how good it feels we can actually fully enjoy our life without turning to the bottle and then waking up miserable when you already have a mess to clean up, why make your head and body even more of a mess?